Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we head up north to get a little peace, relaxation, and work on a blue spruce. We have a beautiful gray day at the cabin. Gray, but no rain, so that's a good thing. A little wet last night when we arrived, and I brought the Colorado Blue Spruce to work on today. Um, I haven't worked on a tree up at the cabin before, so this is a new experience, and I'm pretty excited about it. I couldn't be in a better place, right? We got trees all around us, got the river behind me, we got the forest. Actually, we started the day, I got up and took a little walk. So let's take a peek at some of the trees along the uh, country road near the cabin. We have a forest uh, about a quarter mile from our cabin that was all uh, taken down, most of it. They left some nice uh, old growth trees, which was really nice. And all the new pine varieties are starting to shoot up. Some uh, maples uh, are hard to find, but we got the oaks. We've got uh, also some quake and aspen. So the forest has grown up slow but sure. It's made a lot of progress in the last couple of years. It's a little ironic that I brought a Colorado blue spruce up to the cabin. We don't have uh, blue spruces up here at the cabin. Uh, we have some black and white uh, spruce trees throughout the forest. There are a lot of um, oak trees, a very big oak forest, and a lot of poplars, so very popular up here. We got some white pine. Some have been planted by people who are along the river, and birch, of course, along the river and throughout the woods. So we get a lot of yellows uh, for color, some really dark, deep reds, which is super nice. But no Colorado blue, but this is the tree I wanted to work on up here. 
This is a tree that I found at the nursery at that really steal of a deal. Uh, this one was uh, 30 bucks at the nursery with a good uh, uh, two inch trunk. It's a little bit uh, skinnier at the bottom, close to that Nibari than I would like. But we had all this branching in here, which created some of the bulge down here. So in time, we'll be able to work through some of that and uh, hopefully uh, make this tree uh, presentable. What I really loved about this tree, besides the great price, was the fact that it had so much movement in this trunk. So it swoops way back over here from your angle here. It's going left to right, comes back towards the camera over here now. And so we have natural movement. If you have a big trunk from a nursery find, you're not gonna be able to move that trunk, right? It's big, it's old, it's mature, and those trunks are hard to move. So when we can find some movement, that's fantastic. So we're into fall now, and what I'm basically gonna do is just clean this tree up a little bit. I'm just gonna spin the tree around. We're gonna look at the branches that are threes and fours and fives. You know, we wanna cut those down to two. We're not really gonna to change too much of the shape. This is in no uh, uh, way uh, a styling of the tree. We're just getting this ready for next spring where I'll give it a repot. So I don't wanna to create too much stress on the tree. I'm just gonna get rid of some of the things that we know for sure we don't wanna want, we don't wanna have. I need to get rid of those areas where there's three and four and five branches growing from one spot because that's just gonna create problems down the road. There are some spots deep within that hit some back budding back here, some nice areas, but there's also four and five branches there as well. So I'll take off a couple of the weaker ones and hope the bigger ones will, will survive and we'll be able to bring this tree in compact in future years. So it's a matter of taking a peek, looking around, trying to get a, an idea of where the front of this tree might be someday. It's hard to see from, from uh, the side now because these branches come right out at us. And this is, will not be the front likely because it goes swooping back. So we're gonna have to kind of tilt it to one side or another. We may have to bring it up like this. Um, that's gonna come much later. Um, but I'm still gonna try to make sure I make my cuts um, not too aggressively in case the front of the tree is that side and here I'm thinking it's this side But then I find that side's a, a better front. So don't just hack away Remember to look at your tree and we're gonna try to do our best to take our time and peek at this While I spin this around some more I was able to spend some time on the river already today as well in the kayaks take a peek at this No monsters out of the kayak today, just the little ones, uh, so I didn't get all tugged around. It's kind of fun when you catch a northern that's a fighter and you get to move around the river without a paddle or a motor, just the fish giving you a little ride. Certainly fun to be out there. This trunk does have some nice movement from this front angle, so that's really good to see. I just don't know what we're gonna do with this big clunky branch out here. This one will probably have to come out uh, sooner rather than later. This branch here was busted off and this is kind of a bulge too. So whether this whole branch comes off one day or not, I'm still not sure on that. We're not gonna do that now. So this tree did have what looks to be a little bit of a split down here when this branch was broken off. There was a cut here, but a split here. So there's a little bit of damage there. But most of our pines get that real gnarly bark. The, the uh, wounds heal up real nice over time and it just gives it the character that we love so much in a nice old mature tree. So I'm not too worried about that now. We just wanna make sure the tree stays healthy. 
I'm still spinning. I'm still trying to see where this tree is possibly going to be angled and moving from one side to another. This, this angle looks really good right now. Let me point that your direction. If you can see through these, these two main bottom branches here, we got this movement of the trunk right up in here. And that's really nice from both sides. This side is too thick to really see it. And if I do lose this branch right here, we can then see that movement right here. Kind of goes up and swoops up and it might even come back more this way if we get the right branches going there. As I continue to spin the tree, I am more attracted to, more attracted to this left side as the, uh, the winning angle of the tree. And even though this big branch kind of comes at us, it's going down low enough and if I can bring it down and around to open it up to see the trunk and this is just a lower pad, it might work out. Or we take the whole thing off at one point. This side, this whole lower branch would definitely have to come off. And I don't know that I'm ready to cut that off today. I don't have that tool with me. That would probably be, yeah, this, this damage right here is pretty severe. So a nice smooth cut off of here would probably be the best. And this side just provides some of this nice movement that I like. And so if we're gonna have this pad be a pad out front, we don't want anything growing straight up at the top here. So that one and that one would come off for sure. Because see it blocks, it blocks the view. It's growing straight up. If this is gonna be a mature pad, we want that to all come down and come up towards the sun a little bit, but not straight up where we have two new trees like it's a trunk over here this is the main apex of the tree over here so some of these that are going straight up have to come down so a lot of times we talk about cutting the branches that grow straight up branches that grow straight down and that helps us clean up our tree so now this branch back here has the assemblance of a future pad and then as you look further into the tree there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buds back here. We could lose all of this in the future if those buds continue to grow. Now these buds in here, they're not gonna grow if we have all this thick top, uh, stuff up top. So we always have to consider the life of these buds down here. This is what we want. This is perfect back budding right here. That's gonna become our main branches someday. And this will almost all be gone someday, but that's not gonna grow without this or with this in the way, I should say. So we have to be able to twist this around so the sun can get in there, and we have to thin out the top. So that's one of the reasons we thin out the top is to see uh, or let the sun come down and get those lower buds. I'm not gonna worry about the apex right now though. This is the, the kind of the prize of this tree right now as it curves up, we got a nice top. I'm gonna save that for a little bit later. I still wanna see how I'm gonna twist this tree around and what we might get rid of. God, there's some fun branches on this tree. They're just really, a lot of back buds, there's a lot of little growth in here, new life that really wants to take off. This is a fun little tree all on its own right here. This one's growing straight up like I just cut off over here, but look at how pretty it is, right? It looks beautiful. It's got some, got some movement to the branch. It's got plenty of branches for us to choose from. We can almost make a mini bonsai out of this guy right here, but that's not the main part of the tree, right? This is taking away from this part of the tree. We've got too much over here. So sometimes people are afraid to take off these uh, big branches because they're, oh, they're so pretty and there's great movement. But if you'll note again, look behind it. Look at all this growth back here. And so this, we just cut off that really nice branch. But it's because we don't need it for the future design of the tree. And again, I'm not gonna go completely ballistic on cutting too much of this tree off because I don't wanna create too much stress. This tree is still storing energy for the spring. So we continue to fertilize our trees in the fall to get that big spring push. And this is definitely a tree that's of course in development. It's one of my bigger trees, will be when it's in a pot and it'll look one of my bigger trees. 
but it's still in development because it's just being styled right now for the first time. And again, this is more maintenance, uh, early, early pre-bonsai decisions, not really maintenance, pre-bonsai decisions. Here's a nice example for everybody on a, a branch that's growing inside. We don't typically like branches that grow in T-bars, you know, left and right, right at the same junction. We also don't like branches that grow straight up, straight down. We don't like crossing branches and we don't like branches that curve and grow into the tree, typically, unless that's part of your design and you're wrapping something around. This branch goes this way and is forming this beautiful pad out here. It's very thick and too big and it's not gonna last forever. We're gonna take that off. But I just wanna show you this branch right here. This branch right here behind my, in front of my hand right there, it's growing in towards the trunk of the tree. And so of all the branches that are in there that are cluttering up that view, We'll cut that one off because it was growing this way. We have a branch that mainly wants to go this way and go up like this for our bonsai pad and this is growing this way. It just doesn't make sense. It's not that natural flow we want. We want out and up and eventually these branches go down for weight and age. And so now just by cleaning that up, I just opened up some more of that, that branch area right there. What's really nice about this tree too, to show off to people, is that this tree is so big right now. And yes, we want a nice big tree, it's got a big trunk. But if I left this tree alone, right where it is right now, we've got our apex, ape, apical dominance up here. It's got kind of a triangle cone shape here. But this is gonna ramify and ramify and ramify and we're gonna have a tree that's out here. We don't want a tree that's out here. We want the tree to be smaller than it is right now. We want this tree to be compact. And then the more compact and small the canopy is of the tree, this big trunk then is gonna make it look like it is a huge tree. And then we have a smaller pot than this, and it makes it look like a huge old tree. So when we get this into a small bonsai pot, we make this more compact. It already has an inch plus trunk. It's got some nice thick gnarly bark here. It's gonna look already like a 30, 40 year old tree possibly within the first year of styling. And then we just keep, uh, keep going from there. So we've opened up the tree just so slightly, right? One, two, three, four branches over here. I cut off one that was going straight up here and one that was growing back in there. Six branches. And now we can kind of see the future of this tree possibly. I could leave it like this and be uh, fine with it for the rest of this fall. But I wanna make a, a few more trims. So let's, uh, let's take a peek for a little longer and see if I can cut some of these uh, thick areas that might have five five branches in the whirl. Many pine trees have that whirl we call it where there's four or five branches. Um, and you don't want four or five, we want to go down to two. So I've got five branches here and I'm going to cut off like three of them. But then the branches I'm going to keep, they have one, two, three, four, and five buds in a, in a one to two inch span. That's, that's what we're looking for always in bonsai. So as I zoom in here on this one branch, you'll see all the branches here. You know, we're going to cut some of these off. We've got one, two, three. We've got four over here and five. There's some trailing back here. There's a lot of growth here. We're going to find the two branches that we want to keep. And what we keep of is a whole nother conversation. But before I get to that and show you what I'm going to cut off, look at this nice bud back right here. Right in front of my finger there, that is a bud. Right in front of my finger right there, that is a bud. There is a bud right there at the top of this branch. And there's a bud right there. And there's a bud right there. And there's a bud right there. This one right here is the one that's awesome. That's just lovely because it is about an inch from the internode down there. Just an inch, maybe less. But we have three or four or five buds within the branch, not just at the tip. So in the springtime, if I keep this branch, those might shoot out into some really great growth when we got that huge spring push. And look at the beautiful color of this blue spruce right here. It just This is what shows off the beauty of these trees so so cool so we have all kinds of buds let's shoot up here just a little bit on this next branch and look at the buds on this colorado blue it's just amazing one two three of them right there four five six and there's one way back here all those buds when i tip up this one right here one two three four from the tip down to that middle section all of those buds those adventitious buds are awesome to have. So when we make decisions on which ones we're going to cut off, 
Make sure you cut off the branches that are going to give you more of those adventitious buds because you will have a probably stronger tree that has more options to grow and then you'll have more branches to choose from at the next prune. Staying relatively close, let's take a look at the branches we were just looking at. This section right in here was the branch with all those buds we were looking at. And it's got so much growth. And I was mentioning before that to make this tree more compact, we would, we would have to bring all these branches way back down in here. And so we have to look down at these uh, other branches to see if there's more adventitious buds because if we cut away up here, it's okay to cut right here. But we're gonna cut so back, uh, so deep into the branch eventually that all this is just gonna come off anyway. So all of this lovely growth has produced a lot starches and sugars moving through this tree and saving up all the energy for next year. And all of this little buds back here, phenomenal. So these little buds back here are even more adventitious, of course, or these branches rather, are than these buds because they're already growing in spots that we like. But for showing you what we would be thinking of here, if we were to save this tip, let's just show you saving this tip. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one's down a little bit too low. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six branches in this cluster. I don't want the tree to grow up anymore. I want it out. The top one comes off. I'm left with five. If you're to look at these five, you're gonna see a strong leader, two sides that are right across from each other. There's that T we don't often like, but then there's two uh, sub branches, if you will, down below but they're growing down. I don't want this particular spot to grow down yet at these branch levels, so I would cut those off. So our seven is down to three. And so the fundamental pruning of any bonsai tree is we want to either leave this like this and carry on, let it grow and see what happens next, or we still want to cut down to two. And how are we gonna cut down to two and make that decision right here? So whenever you're making this decision, even if this branch I'm gonna cut off in a few moments here, I'm showing you this as an example. This is just a great way to show you three, uh, three branches real close together. We wanna to go down to two. Anytime there's three or more, we're gonna get more whirls and bulging. So do we want the tree to grow to the left? Do we want it to grow to the right? Or do we want it to get longer? Maybe longer and to the left, or longer and to the right. So you're gonna base your cut on that. Now, because I want to bring this particular tree more compact and smaller, even if I cut to the left of my hand here and my thumb eventually, I'm going to cut it right here because that cuts off the length. So now these branches are growing out to the left and right, and I just cut off about two inches of length for the silhouette of this tree by cutting the center one off. So every branch you look at, take that time to decide. I know this tree is going to be shorter. So I didn't even look at the whole silhouette of this tree, but I did earlier and I knew that it was too big. So I was comfortable taking off this one that went out too long this way. So there's a really good example of how you decide which of those three goes down to two. Let's show one more example of trimming this tree, pruning this tree based on direction. This branch is coming up behind the tree a little bit and it's growing up tall. And if we don't want it to grow taller, again, we can cut this strong leader we can take off on a lot of trees the extra oxen on those tips up there and let it spread down to the tree. We can cut from these three down to these two again to cut off the length. But if I want this branch to grow more to this right side, well, left as you're looking at it, but when you look at the tree, it would be the right side. And we don't want it to go back here. We cut this one off. And now this branch is gonna curve this way. And then when these buds right here grow out and we cut on the left side, it'll grow maybe that way again. Plus we could wire this down somewhere. And if I twist this a little more, we notice we still have a third one back here because this branch is so thick with growth right here. We've got one coming out here. So if I twist this around, I still have a three branch look so I can cut it even one more time at the center and I've got these two branches now. And it is a little bit twisted, but until I see the front of the tree, I won't know which one I will keep later on. But we have four branches here. It's kind of a T here and kind of a T here. We like every other in bonsai. So what if I cut off this one and cut off this one? Now I got a growth here and a growth there and we'll see what happens here. And there's still even one up here. 
Again, this made it all more compact. It opened up the tree a little bit more. And this tree is so thick with back buds and more growth that I would end up cutting this one back even further, like right about there. And so all of that care I took in pruning that top part, now it doesn't matter because I cut it lower, but we want to be careful until we make our final decisions. This is the section of the tree I just cut back over here. So it was growing up a little bit too tall here, and I trimmed it to right here. It was about this big. We cut off a couple branches. I went down one lower. These are all gonna grow up now. And you can see it's a little tall back here. I could also trim up this just a little bit. We've cut off the tip. Here we have another branch. You can see this branch by my hand now. It's growing straight up and back towards the tree. I cut that one off. So all of those little cuts some straight up, some straight down. We've shortened these up a little bit. We have a tree that's a little bit more now uh, in, in kind of a shape, gonna get ready for next year. This one out here is still pretty aggressive. This is looking better back here. This is pretty aggressive. But again, we're not really trying to come up with a final styling on this tree right now. We're just trying to clean it up a little bit to see if we can even see the style we're gonna end up with. This is the angle where the potential curve can be on the right of the tree. If we're looking at this as the center head on and it goes back away from us, we twist it this way, we get that curve. But this big clump we've been working on is still so huge and in our way. And so even though I made all those cuts on here, there's a serious consideration that this branch someday will be completely off. And then you'll be able to see the movement of this trunk and this won't get in our way. But I'm going to keep it for right now. I don't want to make that major of a decision today on that side. So now we have this side of the tree that we started on with a couple of those quick little cuts. You know, it's shorter, there's not nothing. Here's one right here. So as you see the tree from the camera here, this one's pointing back towards the tree. I just cut that little one off. I don't want that one there. This is kind of coming in our face. We could almost cut this entire branch off to see the, uh, the, the branch coming out to the left a little bit more. If I take if I take a look at this branch, I've got the main leader coming towards the camera here. I've got this pretty thick one going back and up that way. If I just cut that one off, it lessens the bulk of the, of the branches here, so it's not quite as in our face. Here's another area where we have some weak buds right here, but there's three branches here. If I make it shorter by cutting the middle one off right there, there's the two branches I left. And now it softens up this front part where it's not taking all the energy away from this tree as far as visually. Another branch going straight towards the back. And we just leave that alone for right now. We just clean this little section up a little bit. Could we pull it back even deeper? For sure. But again, we haven't decided the front of this tree yet. I don't want to get too aggressive yet. This branch to the left is a super nice branch but it's really the same thickness from the whole width of my thumb to my uh, middle finger there, that eight inches or so, maybe pinky to thumb here, eight inches. It's pretty much the same thickness and we always want thick to thinner to thinner. So eventually we have to cut this branch back and let one of these side branches become the new leader of this tree. So it goes thick to thinner and we can get more back budding and get different branches to grow. So right now it's a little thick and this is not really well balanced to this side right now. It's a little thicker over here and it's still a little bit thick up here. So we got to make some decisions. Pulled back a little bit to get a better view of the tree now as a whole. You can see how thick the tree is there when we turn it around. This is the one pr pr proposed front here where we have this nice movement, but this big branch is in the way. This is the other proposed front where we just get a little off center a little bit and we have this nice just movement this way. It doesn't show as much of the movement we would get rid of this and possibly this big chunk out here. But one of the things we can do up top now is just thin it out a little bit. So we have all kinds of growth up here, super thick. Now again, if this is a possible front right here, this branch is growing right at us. This branch is kind of growing at us. This one's growing more to the left. We have to consider maybe where we would cut some of these or which one of these we maybe cut off completely. We want to see where that trunk is going. This is a major branch right here. 
this right here is a major branch it grows it moves up to the left here and then it comes right at us real heavy here and then this is the next thick branch over here there's even was a chop right here and there's a thick branch over here so we've got four major branches here maybe five with this one down here not all five of those can stay there's even another bit of back budding right in here new growth on old wood right there on the trunk of the tree that could become a branch later on but it's not going to get any light right now so we have to we have to get rid of some of this to be able to see that so this gives you a little better indication here of where this tree is growing we've got this branch coming over this way this branch coming over that way this one that's been chopped and then the, then the, then the tree over there this one over here shows most of the movement We got to cut one of these two off for sure. And my first inclination is the one on the bottom. So I'm going to cut that one off. So we cut that one off right here. These two were competing for the same space. We cut that one off. Now this branch has a real nice swoop down and then it wants to come back up here it is trying to be big and tall from this kind of front angle shows off that branch really well so that's why I don't want to take this off yet because that could become a really neat branch but what I can do is shorten it up a little bit and bring it more compact because we have all this lovely growth in here look at all this lovely growth in here with a whole bunch of options as far as what to pick for branches for next year this one's wanting to grow out and big and it's got two buds back here and it's got this new growth from this year right here. All these new buds growing in here. There's four branches right here, boom, boom, boom. And one's real thick and it subdivides up there. So I'm just gonna cut this thick growth off right there just to shorten it up back here. Because I have three buds back here, I'm gonna cut it off right there. And again, depending upon what we do with this branch, we'll find out in the future. Cut that one off, it's straight up. This could be a new um, kind of a swooping branch from whatever side is the main, uh, main view of the tree. This could be more towards the front and in our face, or it could be a nice right to left movement if we keep this as the front. I'm liking this side more and more. The more I spin the tree and the more I make a few little subtle trims, we can see the tree more. I like that. So I'm in closer to the tree now, and I just wanted to show you all this growth up here. So this top, we have some decisions to make. Because here's the big swooping branch that comes down we were looking at moments ago. And then back here is the big branch I said we could cut off completely because it's growing underneath this right here and underneath this up here. So as I pull back some branches, you can see there's two trunks back in there. So what are we gonna keep? We're gonna let the tree go to the left. We can even let the tree grow straight up, but that's the one that was chopped right there. So this was chopped right about there see it doesn't go up very high here we can clean that up but where these junctions meet it's that bottom section down there right here we got to cut that branch off I think I got a big branch coming out here got a branch coming out here the branch coming out here here's the chop we'll get rid of that but then this one is kind of a mystery. That's the one that's below that junction, so we're gonna cut that off. So here's where it was growing. We're gonna take it off. There were three main branches growing there. We're taking that one off. And now just by opening that up right here, we can see the inner workings of this tree already a little bit better. Okay, and there, there is a bit of a whirl up there. That is thick. This area is thick, which is why we're cutting some of this stuff off. And right here is where it was chopped before. We're gonna clean it up and chop it down to the base here. 
So there's our wound right there. So as you can see, I hope you can see, we got this main branch here, this main branch here, this main branch here, and there's also still a branch back there, right there. So we still have stuff we can clean up. But now we've taken off some of the thickness of this tree. And again, we have to decide which way we're gonna keep this tree. We have this movement here. It comes up, over, up this way, and it could come over here, and this could be our new leader. Or this could be the new leader to keep going that way. This seems the most natural. Or do you keep this branch over here, cut this off and make this the new leader? Either way, that other one we saw back here is kind of in the way. And we don't want to get this too bulky. So we cut that one off. So there it comes. And now we're left with three up here. Do I cut it down to two today? Or do I leave it at three? I'm gonna leave it at three. Cause I wanna wait to see what this looks like um, in a pot. When I repot it in the springtime, I wanna see what my options are then. This branch is still way too wide out here, so I'm cutting that off. So we could have some movement with this branch, swing it around to the back a little bit, bring this down. If I do that, I cut this off. I can cut it off right now because there's plenty of you know, branches there. Cut this one going straight down. I probably should cut this one off right now, and this could be growth next year so we have made some nice cuts on the tree we have cleaned it up the Sun is going to reach all of these spots now next year we have more cleaning up we can do. We got a lot of thick areas in here that's just too much, too much for the sun to get through. We've got the whole bottom branch down here that's really nice. It's got a branch that's growing straight up in the middle of it. So I cut that off, give it some air in there. I'm just gonna shorten the whole tree by cutting that off right there. The branch here that I just saw, it's growing straight backwards. Cut that one off. branch back here is kind of hidden from this one and you can see how unhealthy it is that down at the bottom look at all that it's not getting any Sun it was all hidden back there so we got to clean out some of these branches make room for the new stuff so we just cut off this left this right side We'll push the growth to the left over here. We can wire it as well someday. I know all these, these branches over here will survive more because more light's gonna get there. And I have a big decision to make. I've got a really thick branch right here. One going up this way and one going up this way. It splits into four down here. So we have four branches right here. I got one, two, three, and down here four. We don't know what the front of the tree is going to be yet. Is this too low? Do I just take this one off? 
This one's stiff and rigid and got a nice division going that way though. We cut this off. If we cut some of this off, this will have more light down here. Right now it's kind of, there's a couple of weak spots in here because there's no light down in here. just peeked up to the top look at these two competing right here one four one two three these are two branches right here one two three and then there's a branch here thin and then the top branch up here I'll take this middle one out I freed up the space in there Try to clean that up a little bit. Okay. And then these two, there's two growing from the same spot. Take that one off. And now, eventually, with all these in here, we'll have to decide which ones stay and which one go right in there. I'm cutting some of these branches that were right in our face up front here in case this becomes the front. Now it's a little bit lighter here. It's okay with me. I'm going to go shorter on this tip right here. These three are all competing for space back here. I cut this one off because it was a T branch next to another one that's stronger and growing in a nice way back here. I can shorten this one now to here. So now again, from this basic angle, you know, we have kind of a triangle shaped tree, but it's a little weak in here now until these grow bigger. This we got to trim back, it's still too thick. We got to figure out which is going to be the main design of this tree later on. But it's looking pretty good. Only because again, I want to just do a fall prune set it up for a spring push and we've we've done that pretty successfully so far if this becomes the new leader someday we have this little branch here and we have one two three here's the thick main one but here's one two three this is gonna bulge in here it also splits over here real nicely in the two so we're gonna have to get rid of something We can't have all that growth in there and expect it to look nice in the future. So that's in the back. You hardly knew I got rid of anything over there at the moment. This might be a good stopping spot right here. Does it look like the bonsai it'll look like in five years? No, not even close probably. But we cut out about 30 to 40 percent of the foliage. We can kind of see the design of this tree now before we saw this damage up here and a whole bunch of growth. Now we can kind of see things starting to take shape. Where will these end up? Will this become the new apex or will this become the new apex? We've got a real thick base down here. We're gonna clean that up a little bit more. After we get it in a pot, we'll let it uh, grow all year. And we don't even know exactly where the Nabari true Nabari will be. So that's all to come. Yeah, there we go. 30-40% of the foliage. There's a lot of lush green down here, a lot of lush down green here. We cut this thing down to three main branches now. There were five or six at one point. Um, and we're just going to let this continue to soak up energy. For the rest of this, what's going to be a really mild fall, uh, we're looking at temps into the 70s, maybe the 80s back home in this next week, second week into October here, or first full week really. And so we're looking at above normal temperatures for October. We've got a full month before things are really going to start cooling down, you know, more dramatically. So it'll store more energy. 
Um, it'll continue to photosynthesis slowly as we slowly lose light in the fall getting ready for winter. And then we'll uh, find the right pot for this uh, guy and we'll get into a pot this spring. A lot of adventitious buds on this tree in a lot of spots, especially up at the top here in these tips. Not as much on these edges here, but you can see a lot of back budding on these branches that we've shown. This is a healthy tree. We're working on a really healthy tree and can't wait to see wow, the direction this will go in coming years. What a fantastic place to work on bonsai. So great, grateful and happy to be up here at the cabin. A little kayaking, a little tree work with the big trees and a little uh, bonsai work to boot. Can't wait to see where this one goes. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai and we'll catch you on the next one.